Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on exporting data using our export scenarios. So in a previous video, I talked about the import scenario process and we went into depth on how that works. During that video, I also promised that I go through the export scenario. Well, as you might imagine, it's pretty similar, the process, only in reverse. So let's look at how we go about creating an export scenario. So the first thing we do is we create a data provider. So now to do this, this is the data provider that we will ultimately put the export file into. So whatever we create here, we'll end up with the file. So the way to get this started, or at least the easiest way, is determining what our file type will be. So in this example, we're going to use an Excel file type to export the data to. So what we'll do in order to get this started is we'll create the structure of an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll move Excel over here. And just like any data file, we need to give it headers or column names for the structure of the file. So let's say, for example, we're exporting customers. So the first thing we want is maybe the account. And we want the name, company name. Then maybe we want the zip code and the state and maybe the city. So this is a very simple export file that we're going to use, a simple data provider that we're going to create. We'll save this to a folder and then we'll create our name of our data provider. So a customer export, it'll be in Excel. We'll hit the save button here. We'll click on files. And again, we could drag and drop. We can add the link if the file is already in Acumatica. But in this case, we'll hit the Browse button. And we'll select our file and upload it. So the schema object in a data provider is essentially the table. And we're talking about Excel. That's the sheet name. So we'll check that, get that enabled and then we'll fill our schema fields. Now, Acumatica went out, looked at the Excel file, saw the column headings, and added these as fields. These fields are going to be useful because later when we create our map, we're going to be mapping to them. So now we have our data provider. We'll hit the Save button. You can turn off any fields here that you want. You can even change the data type if you'd like to do that as well. We'll go back to Integration. And we'll take a look at our export scenario. Open it up in another tab so we can jump back and forth. So this will be export customers. And you can give it any name you want. <clears throat> now the screen name is the screen we're going to be pulling the data from. So Acumatica's import and export scenarios are very literally pulling data from the screen. If I'm importing, it's almost as if somebody's using a keyboard and typing in that screen. If I'm exporting, it's actually pulling the data again from that same screen. So if we go to customers, search for customers, this is the entire sitemap of Acumatica. And we don't want a PL. PLs are primary lists. Those are generic inquiries. We want to pull from the actual profile screen. So we'll select that. And then we'll pick our data provider. So there it is right there, customer export. And now we need to start our mapping. So if we add a record here, the first thing we need in that file, we go back, we take a look at our data provider and look at the fields we're trying to fill with information. The first one, maybe logically, is we want to export to the account field. So we'll look for the account field. So this is the source of the screen. So this is the source object of the screen. If we click view screen here, just so we can see the screen, it can be very helpful. So we'll split the screen here to show. This is very helpful because what we're looking at is the customer summary. So that's this top area right here. And basically all the fields that are within it. We'll take a look at this, some of the other source objects in a second. So now the field name is anything in this area, including notes. You got your notes up here. 
But in our situation, we want to pull the customer ID. Okay, Acumatica automatically gives language here to determine how to pull that field and any necessary actions. So now the customer ID is going to be mapped to, this is our export file. So account, that's what we wanted. Now we're going to pull the name, so customer name, which is right here. And then the next thing we wanted, just go back to cheat, is uh, the zip. I know these aren't in order necessarily, but. So now we can't find the zip there because it's not in the customer summary. It is, however, under the general info, under main address. So if we go back and we change this customer summary to general info, main address, We'll now see our zip code, we call it postal code in Acumatica. And we'll do a drop down and we'll map that. And then we'll pick our state, map that across. And lastly, our city. Now lastly, we need to put an action in here to finalize this. So if we go back to customer summary and we scroll down, we can see the action save. Now additionally, you also have the ability to come in here and look at source restrictions. Let's say for example, we wanted to create conditions. We'll maximize this. We don't need the customer screen anymore. Let's say we wanted to create a condition where maybe our customer class is equal to a specific one. Therefore, we would only export out those records. Or maybe we only want to export out customers in a certain state. We go down to general info under main address and pick that state. So you can do that stuff here under source restrictions. So now if we save this and we go to integration, under transactions, we now have export by scenario. So we'll open that up. And we'll bring up our export scenario here. And I always like to prepare first. So I can see the data that we're looking at, the data that we're exporting. So again, we got our account ID. We got our name. We got our zip code, state, and city. These are the fields we're pulling out of Acumatica. I always also like to toggle activation and just select a few records so I can see what it looks like. Now, I can tell you that because this is an Excel file, if we export all this, it's not a big deal if the file comes out wrong, you can work on it, but you just don't want to waste the time. If you have thousands of records, you don't want to wait for thousands of records to go by before you figure out whether or not it's coming out right. So we'll save this, we got eight records here. We'll click the export button, and now this is done. Now, we will see this under the data provider. As you can see here, so we can open it up from here. And if we move over our spreadsheet, you can see the data got exported. Pretty easy. We can also see the data will show up in Acumatica. The data shows up also here. So you can click files and take a look right there. And if we click edit, you can see the file maintenance screen in Acumatica. Notice there was a file that we uploaded, we attached at 905, but this is the export. So every time we export, you'll see a new version here. So if I go back to export by scenario, and I select a few more. Notice these are processed. So Acumatica is not going to run through these again. They're already done. Unless I uncheck them. If I click export. And I go back to our file maintenance. You'll notice there's a new record here. So a new file got created. Different versions of this file are continually being created. Now, on top of that, Acumatica has a very nice feature that allows you to synchronize this file. 
So this file maintenance screen, which is throughout every document that's attached to Acumatica in various areas of Acumatica, can be synchronized by using synchronize and you could choose FTP, secure FTP, HTTP site, or a shared folder. Shared folders are typically if you're hosting Acumatica yourself and you have shared folders accessible to your Acumatica server. But these options are nice because you put in your path, the path of the FTP folder, the login credentials, and then you could synchronize that data with a folder and a new file every time. And you could select the naming convention that you're using. So you can use a revision or a date. And the system will keep track of the last import date, last export date. In this case, it's an export. This synchronization, however, works for imports too. And then from the screen, you can, after filling all this out, you can hit synchronize the export file. I'm going to get an error message because I don't have a valid path or login and all that. I don't have any information here. But the other option you can do is if you go back, there's a synchronization screen, file synchronization, that allows you to, and again, I'm not configured here, so it's not set up yet. You can process all of the files that you have set up to sync, and you could schedule them. So you could say every hour, every day, or something like that. So that's how this works, and this will allow you to synchronize your files with, for example, an FTP site. Now, export scenarios also can be scheduled. So if we go down to integration and we go to processes, so we can prepare and export any export scenario that we have here. So if we're searching, I mean contains, cust, you can see right here, export customers. Now what you could do is you could select this and process it, or you could again schedule it. Now if we schedule this, just take a look at the scheduler, give it a name, give it the time when it's supposed to start syncing, and give it the schedule, the frequency and everything. But under filter values, you can see this is the operation, we could see the operation here, and any of the other features in this operation, skip headers for example. Under conditions though, we have the ability to select what is the name. So the name right now equals export customers. So that's our condition. So when we set up the schedule, we don't need to export all of these different scenarios. We don't need to run all these scenarios. We can just select the one we want. So again, you have a number of options here. So you would typically trigger your export at maybe five minutes before the file synchronization so that the latest data is there and available to get synchronized. So that's export scenarios in Acumatica. If you have any additional questions about this, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and have a great day.